Good morning, everyone. This is Jason from Do You Know Drones, and we are getting ready to start episode two of the Enterprise Drone Platform Showdown. We're here in Commerce City, right down the street from my house, and we are about to test out both measure ground control and drone deploy their mobile applications for the data capture portion of this assessment. So let's get started. Let's start with measure ground control. To get into our flight plans, we just click on flight plans. From here, we select grid. We select the VEP flight plan. And we can see that it's with the Mavic 2 Pro camera. We hit next. Here we can see all of the mission settings, the flight area settings. Here we're gonna go ahead and change the speed to 12 miles per hour to match the drone deploy mission. You can see these some advanced options here. You can change the gimbal angle. Remember, we're gonna keep it course aligned. Everything's the way we like it, so we hit save and fly. It goes through a pre-flight checklist. You'll see when it gets to airspace check, it stops, but without the direct connection to air map, I can't fix it. So then we just hit fly. And the drone initializes, and we're underway. Here you can see on the interface, I can pause the mission, tell it to come home or stop it. I have no idea why it flies to my starting waypoint and then back to my ending waypoint. I don't exactly like that it shows you a picture for every single time. Several minutes later. Now we're finishing up the mission. Overall, it's a pretty clean display. So I kind of like that. Really no problems with the mission. I would say it's a success. I don't like that this screen comes up it, it just stays hovering until you hit all done and then it'll start to land. I would rather it land first and then that come up. That's just my opinion. But who am I? A drone scientist or something? And that's it. Close and you're done. Clean, easy. All right, drone deploy is up next. We start by clicking on our Village East Park project. Drone is connected. This looks just like the interface online, so that's super nice. We hit start flight, runs through a quick pre-flight. Oh man, my remote controller wasn't in the right mode. My bad. Quick fix, switch, and it will automatically finish the pre-flight. All right, cool, so now, we just have to do one thing. We're just gonna take a quick look around and we're gonna hit start flight. Drone initializes and we're off. Well, I noticed something rather concerning on the ascents. I noticed that the drone gimbal was just kind of stuck. It, it wasn't changing angle. It wasn't starting to look straight down to Nader. It just stayed there. So I thought maybe, maybe it would fix itself when it got to altitude. Well, it didn't, so wah wah, fail. No! Let's try this again, shall we? So I reset everything and turn the drone off, turn it back on and start again. Well, all right, same mission, here we go. Let's see what we gotta do this time. All right, so I actually still like the, the matching between what's online exactly and what's on the mobile experience. That is very helpful, very handy. I just gotta learn one thing. And the authorizations are right here. I can see that my upcoming authorization is right here. And also all of the other apps are here as well. So that's just super nice, helpful, uh, added value risk assessment tools, mission assessment tools. I can see the surface wins a loss. Really nothing has changed in the user experience. It's the same user experience between, and the user interface between online and mobile. So that's just nice. So I got everything checked. You can check the, the sun angle score and the, where the sun is too. So now I'm gonna go ahead and start the pre-flight checklist. All right, here we go. It's running through the checklist. Runs through, everything's clean. 
And we just click that big start flight button in the bottom right hand corner. Drone initializes and here we go. All right, drone takes off. And it's really bizarre because now, the, once again, the drone looks like it's got a weird limp gimbal. Yep, limp gimbal. And it never really fixed itself throughout the mission. So I didn't really notice it until the end, but it's definitely just a limp gimbal. And I did verify this with Drone Deploy. It's a known issue. So I can't give Drone Deploy high marks on this. I do like that you can ca you can take all the imagery, imagery and upload it right now. But in this case, apples to apples, I'm gonna process the imagery into a map. So that's it for Drone Deploy. All right, now the fun part. Let's get to the ratings. Let's start with measure ground control. What did I like? What did I like about measure ground control, the mobile app? I like that it was intuitive. I like that it was clean. I like that it was able to just pull off the mission. Kind of a big deal. Pulled it off the very first time. And it's all, since it's all about getting data and getting it out there the very first time, that's a big deal. That's gonna rate highly with me. What didn't I like? I didn't like during the pre-flight checklist, and this is just a little thing, but it just didn't have that knowledge of my airspace authorization to be able to just make that green. It was just a notification and being that it was red, it made it look like it was a hard stop, when in reality, it's not. I knew that I had the authorization through AirMap. Just if I had that verification, that would just make me feel better and it went green, that would be really good. Um, I know that within the app, I can request that authorization, but in this case, I did so during the mission planning phase online. So once again, just a small disconnect, disjointed experience. But overall, I'm gonna go ahead and give Measure Ground Control Data Capture Experience 4.5. Oh, drone deploy. <laughs> Start on a positive note. Once again, I really like that it is a common user experience between the online and the mobile app. That is a great thing. Everything transfers over from the mobile app or from online experience to the web app to the mobile app. All the apps are there, authorizations are there. It's the same user experience. I feel like I could fly it online just like I could from the mobile app. It was a very, very good and clean user experience. That's the good news. Bad news, couldn't actually get the mission done twice. <sighs> I'm glad that it's a fix. It's a fix that's coming out, but being that, and I understand, I do. I completely understand. I've been in this industry long enough to know that not everything works all the time, but being that I'm doing an apples to apples comparison, I'm, ugh, I'm gonna have to take that into account this time. I'm sorry. <laughs> so my rating for drone deploy for the, and I'm gonna be nice here, for the drone deploy for the data capture experience, I'm go ahead and give you three stars. So that's it. Round two of this five round heavyweight battle clearly goes to measure ground control. But stay tuned next week when we talk about my favorite episode. That's gonna be processing and analytics. It's gonna be a long one, so stick with me. And don't forget, don't forget, you're gonna wanna hit that subscribe. What is it, over here, over here, over there, over there, right there. You're gonna wanna hit subscribe. You wanna hit that notification bell, like, share. This one's gonna be epic. So things seem to be tied up right now. Stay tuned next week when we really put these enterprise engines through the paces as far as processing analytics by me, the drone scientist. This is gonna rock. Let's go.